Hello folks, welcome back. This is part four or session 13, clustering. Uh, so we already discussed a little bit about Dirichlet uh, processes. Now we are going to talk a little bit of spectral clustering. Um, this idea may be related a little bit to random walks if you want to push it, but uh, in general, it is just another way of doing clustering here that is um, actually interesting and, and, and useful, uh, but it's more on the on the side of linear algebra and an intersection with graphs more than uh, probability itself. But again, uh, it is a useful technique, so it, it is a good idea to to talk a little bit about it. So what we are doing, what we are going to be doing here is that we assume that we have some uh, n different nodes, and these nodes are uh, related through some graph. Um, so these nodes uh, will have some weights between them, right? And our base uh, idea is to take some partitions on these and try to, to uh, find the best way of, of um, dividing them such that when we do the division in here, we get these, these partitions that are tightly coupled between between them, right? So this will be one A1 and A2 partition of my graph. And what we do here is like we perform a cut. So we're cutting the graph in 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 this case to two different parts. But in general, we can do this cut in n in k different cut, uh, partitions, right? So we can define this as the cut between different parts. And this cut is a measure of how uh, divided this is. Uh, this is one half of the summation of the k partitions of w, a k, and the complement of a k. So I'm taking all the other different, uh, so a k complement here is just all my, my vertices, and I'm going to remove the k from there. And this W over here is nothing else but the sum of the weights. So this W between two, two sets here is just the sum of all the I's in A and all the J's in B. And then we're going to sum the weights I, J. So if I take this graph over here, and this is no I, this is no J, this H over here has a WIJ wave, and this will work, um, but there is one problem because if we try to minimize this cut over here, one naive solution is just take one uh, node here and cut it from the rest of the graph, so that will be some problem. So we can introduce the idea of normalizing cuts, and a normalizing cut uh, from, from a partition is um, just taking the cut and dividing it by the whole volume or the whole uh, amount of edges that I have. So I can take my cut between a K partition and its complement and then dividing it by the volume of that node over here. So this volume here uh, of A is just the sum of all the I's in A and just summing the degrees. And these degrees define as um, uh, the degree i as the sum of all the j's from one to n. So I'm just going to traverse all the different nodes and sum all the weights i, j. Okay, so what I'm doing is when I uh, stand in this node, I want to see what is the weight with respect of all the other ones? And if I'm not connected to them, that weight will be zero here. So we want to use this uh, normalizing way of, of producing uh, the, the different cuts of the graph. And through minimizing these, we can obtain uh, a way of clustering these, these, um, these values. And depending on how we define these weights, we may obtain different uh, clusters and different ways of connecting the data. So this was really use, uh, useful in computer vision, for instance, to perform segmentation in objects. And then the whole uh, tricky here, or the trick here, is uh, how to select these weights based on the data. 
uh, in such a way that when you perform the cut, it obtains the best uh, segmentation possible, for instance. So another way of seeing this, uh, this clustering technique. Another way of, of working with this is um, through the, the spectral uh, graph theory in, in which you want to represent uh, the matrix through its Laplacian. So the Laplacian, Laplacian of the, of the graph here, here, call it L, is the difference between the degree matrix and the weight matrix. And this degree matrix here is the diagonal that represents um, the degrees of the of the graph here. So if I represent my my adjacency matrix over here, and this degree matrix is just this diagonal over here, um, and this is uh, just again the sum of the weights with respect of all the other all the other nodes. So how how uh, connected each uh, node is with respect of all other all others, okay? And and this graph Laplacian has some particular uh, property in which I can produce some U matrix over here that contains all the eigen uh, vectors. And what I'm going to do is just to pick just the first k of them. And what will happen is that these k, k um, smallest ones can represent the connectivity within the graph. So these k eigen vectors here represent uh, how many components I have within my graph. And then, uh, since I have these, this particular shape here, I have some really nice uh, trick that I can play by taking this n by k matrix, and then uh, represent like each of these rows will represent my data points with respect of the new base, right? Now, if I perform clustering on these row vectors over here, now I can just simply put back the labels that I got from each of those to my data points or original data points, right? Or in this case, my graph. So what I can do is just, once I have the, the eigen vectors from this Laplacian matrix, um, take the rows, per, uh, perform some clustering algorithm on those rows, whatever you want, uh, K means for instance, um, and then simply take the labels that corresponds to each of those and assign them back to my data points. And that is really, really nice. And the, the nice thing about this Laplacian is that I have different flavors that I can use or apply. So for instance, we can use uh, some, normal, some normalization here. So I have a normalized version in which um, this Laplacian corresponds, or it's kind of similar to random walk. So if you normalize using the degree matrix over here and you plug it back, you obtain the identity minus the inverse uh, w here. And these perform some uh, more stable computation and then you can s repeat the processes before. Compute the eigen vectors from here, select k minimum ones that you, that you obtain and then using those uh, representations, perform clustering in the new versions of the data points in the, row, in the rows of this matrix and then use those as the, as the new uh, clusters. There is a symmetric version of these in which uh, what you do is that you normalize with respect of this symmetric form of the degree matrix. And this is again similar to, to before. This is the inverse over here. And you perform again the same trick and uh, you normalize the the rows of the eigen of the eigen vectors and this produces really nice and really interesting uh solutions for the for the different processes here and uh this uh, has been used the uh, kind of recently if you want kind of it's um i think two or three years ago 
And these ideas were extended into graph convolutional neural networks. So they kind of revived these, these ideas and brought it to light. So you can extend this idea of a spectral graph theory and propose something like a convolution. It's not necessarily a convolution, but then you can use it again to, to do operations over the graphs. But that is kind of uh, a way and, and a different talk from uh, these ideas of, of producing um, uh, clusters here. But the whole point of this is that it is really good for you folks to understand these more classical um, topics and go back and, and then push these recent ideas through new lenses to obtain um, new, new, new ways of seeing things. Okay, so stay tuned for the last part.